Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today I'm going to go over a new series that's going to be on debunking flat earth. And uh, yeah, the first video I'm going to go over is gyro compass aligns with earth's rotation. And uh, yeah, the reason I'm doing uh, this series is because I've, I've got a lot of uh, messages uh, either claiming uh, flat earth or uh, asking me about it. And I've seen a lot of misinformation, so I might as well dive right in. And here's a bunch of links I'm going to go over. It's going to be a quick video. So there's my MES links, so a whole uh, bunch of links to everything. And I also have a uh, Earth's curvature calculator. And and uh, yeah, we'll uh, review my anti-gravity part six video in regards to the gyro compass right here. And there's a link to the hive notes. And then we'll go over the gimbaled uh, gyroscope and then the uh, World War II uh, gyro compass. Uh, and then this uh, also, also no, another one of the World War II gyro compass fa uh, factory and testing. And then uh, just to briefly go over the gyro, gyro compass wiki and then MES experiments, which I may do, uh, which I made some, uh, may add some gyro compass experiments to them. All right, anyways, let's just dive right in. So here's the MES links. So I added this one here. Uh, if you haven't, uh, uh, if you aren't familiar with this, is basically. Yeah, a single web page I made with all links to basically everything, the math tutorials and so on. And also has drop down here. So you click this and it has drop downs and you can click whatever you want. So under gravity, you can see all the links, the relevant links, 9-11 free energy stuff. And uh, now I added a debunking flat earth, added some mainstream debunking websites and also this earth's uh, curvature calculator right here. And you can go there and uh, this will be using it uh, in later videos and so, so on in the live stream. So if you write enter distance 22 miles, the curvature is approximately 98.38 uh, meters or 300, uh, 322 feet. And you can switch as kilometers and it shows right here, 37 meters, 124 uh, feet for 22 kilometers. And so on, I'll, I'll make it uh, look nice uh, maybe later on. All right, now let's go to the next link. This is gonna be my Andy Gravity part six, video two, just because the, there was some uh, YouTube limits to the length. It's 11 hours, the other one is, uh, is I think uh, nine hours or so on. They had limits, but now you can upload pretty much days long. And uh, so basically here is uh, from the one hour 54 mark of video two, I go over the gyro compass, but before then I go over some uh, uh, some yeah information regarding uh, how gyroscopes spin and precession tend to line up. And this is from the 154 and it goes on all the way till the uh, two hour and 50 uh, minute mark, et cetera. So basically an hour of gyro compass related topics. Anyway, so we're gonna go sc scroll uh, through the, to the notes. Here's the video notes of that. Yeah, so we're, we're back right here. So the gyro compass is the embodiment of the magical properties of gyroscopes. Again, this is uh, my lingo, uh, uh, but also it is pretty magical. Yeah, so here is, uh, this is the part of the video, and then there's the notes, exact notes of it on the Hive blockchain. I'm just gonna zoom in like that. And uh, let's quickly review some of the gyroscope properties. So uh, if you see my earlier videos, uh, gyroscopes actually rise, they don't just process. So if you, even if you add a weight to this, here's a gyroscope on a needle, and, and then if it's spinning this direction, it's gonna go, the torque is pushing downwards, and so it's gonna torque it, uh, so basically it's gonna torque uh, to line up the uh, procession and spin, and, and even if it means rising up in the air. So it's gonna rise to line up, and it can even rise downwards as well, yeah, if you have a, a counterweight like here. And uh, also some more uh, alignment right here with the Owen Lang experiments. And so on, I'm just gonna go fast forward. If you have it, if you have it at an angle, it will also rise to, uh, so that this spin lines up this procession. And then uh, similar with the tippy top, it will rise up so that the procession lines up with the spin. And even a, uh, this is the, yeah, an egg too. So if you spin an egg, it will rise on its own. So if, like this, this is a, an unstable one, um, but then it will want to rise so that the uh, global uh, procession or spin lines up with the internal spin right there, the yellow and red, like that. And uh, that brings us to uh, basically the gyro compass, and it's basically a gimbaled gyroscope. Uh, so if you have a, this is a gimbal gyroscope right right here. So it, it's allowed to torque. I mean, yeah, it's allowed uh, basically spin around this axis and also tilt uh, like that. Uh, but the one thing it's not allowed to do, it's not allowed to uh, move in this direction. Uh, so in other words, it can't make this uh, gimbal frame go through to the ground. So this is preventing it from that. So basically it has a degree of freedom removed. Uh, but then if you add a, a torque here, this wants to line up with the procession. And I wanna just scroll here. So there's a stable equilibrium right here when these are both in line and you spin it. But if it's if it's spinning this way and then you push it the opposite side, it's actually unstable. It won't uh, induce procession 
Uh, but if you have it in any way offset, then you're going to start inducing precession and, and then we'll start to... And also here, if you just move it around, it wants to tend to align with this, uh, yeah, with this original orientation uh, because of uh, rotational inertia and so on. Here's some more uh, stuff like that. And then if you uh, move it over a, a vertical like this, it's basically the concept of a um, of a gyro compass. Uh, so we'll, we'll just play some videos right here, this one right, right now. So the gyro, gyro uh, scope centered on gimbals, great gyro uh, compass demonstration. All right, so here, right now, I'm gonna lower this volume. So it's not spinning, so everything's free, and then if you lift it up and move it, uh, yeah, so the orient orientation changes, it doesn't wanna, yeah, it doesn't wanna maintain, et cetera. It's, just, it's own inertia isn't enough to overcome the friction and so on. So there's the spin and it spins this way and that way. All right, and then when I spin it up, I'm just gonna lower the volume, speed this up. All right, so now it's spinning. So if I move it like this, now if I hold it, it wants to keep pointing in this, the same direction. Right, I'm just making it like this. So now it, it wants to keep in that same direction. So again, uh, gyro, gyro uh, scopes or gyro compasses, or basically this this whole principle of it is used in uh, aircraft and ships and so on in other uh, uh, applications. You have to find you have to find the horizon or tilt and so on. So th th this is a demonstration. So I can move it around and it wants to maintain that uh, orientation. All right. And then as I'm spinning it, uh, so it still wants to maintain it. So now what I'm going to do is apply a torque. Well, actually, as soon I'll do that. So I'm just going to keep doing that. Okay. So now I'm going to apply a torque, and then, uh, as I showed in my earlier videos, you you can find out where it's spinning. So uh, even even though we don't know, where, like I don't know where it's spinning right now, but if I do the precession, if I just apply a force, depending on w which way this moves, uh, it will line up with the precession. So we can actually determine where it spins without knowing where it spins. All right, so I'm pushing this way, so it's lining up. So in other words, this is spinning. Uh, if you had your uh, right hand, uh, I mean, it's gonna be left hand spinning. So it's gonna be uh, clockwise like that. All right, because it's uh, yeah. See, it's it's freely it's spinning exactly the same as precession. So in other words, see how my left hand opened like that? That's the this is the torque vector up, and this is the uh, rotation of the fingers. All right. And, and now it's unstable one. If I go, if I spin it up, if I process it or uh, push this uh, on the opposite of its spin, it's unstable, meaning any deviation is gonna force precession, uh, but, or induce precession. So right now there's no precession. Look, it's no precession. But then the second I do a quickly, so notice it tilts, and now there's precession. It's gonna flip completely upside down. So it's gonna go completely upside down. And now I know it's where it's uh, spinning, it's gonna be spinning up, and then this is going backwards. So each time if you, yeah, now it's going back to that regular direction. This so there's stable and unstable equilibrium. Okay, now it's going backward. Okay, and there it is. You induce precession. It's in a, there's a force right here holding it back, and it rotates, and now it's spinning uh, counterclockwise. And now as you go backwards, so if you go very slowly, and yeah, you can uh, not deduce, not induce precession. So and now, now you can also do some other stuff like this. So if you push down, the, the frame moves and so on. All right, so that is that. And now the next uh, setup, see the setup links uh, we had. Uh, yeah, so the next one is the WW2 uh, gyro compass and so on. And actually, we'll go back uh, to this notes right here. So, it, so that gyro compass is basically yeah that exact same gimbal setup I have, but now it's it's tilt, tilted uh, vertically like this, so that uh, this will always find true north when uh, when the Earth rotates. It's the same as pushing this with your finger. It's the same thing as pushing it, and then this is gonna this is gonna move such that it lines up with the Earth's rotation. And uh, also, if you were to move it uh, about, uh, depending on where it is, uh, you're going to have different speeds of this uh, procession up to it, and you can determine Earth's curvature and so on. All right, so that is the basic principle of gyro compass. And now we'll look at actual gyro compasses. Uh, this is a uh, this one from World War II, and you'll see the amount of sophisticated uh, instrumentation and uh, accuracy and just the amount of engineering put into it is remarkable. And so here it is. This one's aligned with the North Pole. This is the global precession or the, the red I have it of the Earth's. Um, this is the Earth's rotation. And, and, and instead of having this gimbal set up right here, what it actually has 
Yeah, it actually has uh, these compensator weights here so that it prevents it from uh, going, uh, uh, rotating about this, uh, rotating about like how my mouse is. So in other words, it always keeps it uh, perpendicular to the surface. Uh, so imagine the weights would be somewhere across here and here so that it, it will not allow it to uh, move opposite or, or rotate about that axis and I'll, I'll demonstrate that soon. So before we play that, I'm gonna keep going. It also has a phantom element right here because uh, it, it needs to be super precise where you can't have the the string uh, go into any knots. So then you'll have an actual a separate uh, apparatus that follows the string, we'll play that soon. But again, here's the gyro compass right here. Yeah, so here's an illustration here from uh, this website, but I had to correct it because I noticed it made some uh, errors right here. I'm gonna zoom in. So, um, so uh, I mean, it's no top picture is a free gyroscope, bottom picture is a gyro compass. So here's a, a gyro compass. Well, this one's a gyroscope right here that has uh, no, no uh, forced gimbal setup or compensator weights like here. So this one here wants to maintain its orientation. So as the earth rotates, this appears to be rotating, but it's actually the earth rotating. So this one wants to maintain its absolute uh, orientation due to its inertia. So ship anchored on equator, then axis of gyroscope points east and west at, at end of one hour and then at the end of two hours and this end of three hours. So earth rotating from west to east at a rate of 15 degrees an hour. And then you have here, MES uh, correction, spin direction should align with Earth's rotation. So here's the gyro compass, has these weights, like I was saying, these are the weights uh, they would add it to this gyroscope so that it will not rotate uh, relative to the Earth. So it's gonna be forced to be perpendicular. So in other words, you're inducing a torque to this gyro compass or gyroscope. And then this will start processing such that, again, like I always uh, uh, state, that the uh, overall procession the, the, or the torque in this case, Earth's rotation, lines up the spin direction. So this is the wrong way. It's supposed to go the other way. So uh, MS, uh, correction, spin uh, direction and uh, should align with Earth's rotation. So yeah, this person uh, made a mistake here. It should be the other way around. So uh, rotation of Earth's uh, ca carries ship from west to east, regardless of ship's own movement, so that the axis of gyroscope always becomes tipped from horizontal until it is pointing due north. And again, notice the compensator weights is pushing it down. So instead of it lifting it up, it's being torqued about here. So this is always going to be perpendicular to uh, the surface. It's always going to yeah, uh, be in line with this instead of uh, rotating upwards. All right, so now we went over that. Let's play this right here. Uh, actually, this one right here. So this is the World War II, and it shows the comparison. There's a compensator weights. So it's filled with uh, liquid mercury. On the miniature mercury wheel of a gyroscope. This dependency exists for basic parts on the miniature Mercury compass, has its exact counterpart on an actual compass, the Sperry Mark 14. The rotor is 10 inches in diameter, with nearly all of its 55 pounds concentrated in the rim. To turn it 6,000 times a minute, this rotor is not driven by an external force. It is actually the armature of a three-phase induction motor. The rotor bars and laminations are mounted on the inside of the rim, and the field windings are bolted to the interior of the rotor case. The rotor axle revolves in ball bearings, which fit into the bearing housings of the case. As a unit, the rotor and case constitute a complete electric motor, which corresponds to the model gyroscope rotor with the inside ring. This horizontal ring represents the Mark 14 case. On the sides, two horizontal studs support the case in the bearings which are held by the vertical ring. All right, so th this ring right here holds it so that uh, basically it can tilt, uh, uh, tilt about that axis. So if you have an axis right here, this tilts about it. The rotor and case are located inside the vertical ring, just as in the model. Then the C-frame holds this assembly on the model, while on the Mark 14, the corresponding assembly is supported by a wire composed of 18 separate strands. This is the basic component of the gyro compass and the first of our five major assemblies. Known as the sensitive element, it is simply a gyroscope rotor mounted so that it has the same necessary three degrees of freedom that are apparent in the model gyroscope. First, let's consider the spinning axis. The model gyroscope gets its power from force applied to a string. 
since the compass is in itself an induction motor. Its power comes from a three-phase, 210-cycle, 50-volt current. Because of its weight, the rotor requires about 10 minutes to attain its speed of 6,000 revolutions a minute. As in the model gyroscope, the vertical ring provides the sensitive element with freedom of movement about the horizontal axis. The model is given freedom about the vertical axis by mounting it in a frame. On the Mark 14, vertical freedom is provided by the wire suspension. A pair of weights known as compensator weights are attached to the vertical ring so that the element is equally balanced in the north-south plane and in the east-west plane. Yeah, so basically it's exactly a gyroscope, uh, but then it adds, uh, yes, yeah, so in other words, has all the degrees of freedom but it has these compensator weights so that it, it can't push these weights uh, upward. So it always aligns with the uh, uh, perpendicular to the surface. Although the gyro compass has 150 times the directive force of the magnetic compass as it turns toward the meridian, it still would not be sufficient to overcome the friction of an ordinary support. Since even the finest ball bearings would offer too much resistance, a practically frictionless method of mounting is employed. To accomplish this, a phantom ring is provided to form the basic part of the second major assembly, the phantom element. Then the sensitive element is suspended within the phantom ring by the wire suspension, the top end of which is secured to the top of the phantom stem, as seen in this cutaway model. The third major assembly is the spider element. This element provides a support for the first two assemblies, the sensitive and phantom elements. The stem of the phantom fits inside a thrust bearing on the spider, and the compass card is fastened on top of the phantom. As the sensitive element turns in seeking north, it would tend to twist the wire suspension. Then the wire, trying to untwist itself, would introduce a precessional force that would keep the compass from turning toward the meridian. To prevent the wire suspension from becoming twisted, the phantom does just what its name suggests. It follows every minute movement of the sensitive element, so the wire has no chance to become twisted. Yeah, yeah so do you hear that? So basically the, the, uh, the string it doesn't want to uh, force any uh, precession on it by uh, winding up. So it, it actually has a separate phantom element that literally uh, involves sensors to detect the string uh, rotation or just the overall rotation and then follow it so that the friction is near zero. But what makes it follow so exactly? No, it isn't magnetism and it isn't black magic. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know about that. The power to drive the phantom in its pursuit of the sensitive element is supplied by the azimuth motor which is geared to the phantom. With every movement of the sensitive element in either direction, the motor starts and drives the phantom ring around into perfect alignment. As we have already seen, the compass card is an integral part of the phantom element. Therefore, when the sensitive element turns in its north-seeking movement, the azimuth motor drives the phantom and the card into position. In this way, the zero mark of the card always remains aligned with the north-seeking axle and the 180 degree marker stays aligned with the south axle. Response of the phantom is very quick. All right, anyways, uh, the rest of the video discusses the, some more uh, sense of element, element and so on. So that is one of the ones to show that and also actually go back to uh, this setup right here. Yeah, so it has a phantom element, has the compensator weights and then as the Earth's uh, uh, rotation is the, uh, shown in, in this red, it induces, it's the same thing as, as applying your finger to this torque right here. It's the same, it's, it's the same idea as applying a torque to, the, to this, and then it, it's going to move to align it. So when you press this, this is going to move to align, spin, and uh, precession directions. And it's the same thing right here. Uh, yeah, the spin and, and the rotation of the earth has to align with the spin, uh, not, like, not as shown in there. And uh, again, this is going to line up with this. So, so spinning here. So if the Earth's this way, you can automatically tell which way this is spinning. Like that. All right. And now what I want to demonstrate is, is that other video right here. The showing you the factory and this, the amount of testing going in 
to these uh, gyro compasses. So here, let's play some of this. that in many instances the old magnetic type of compass has had to be replaced by a more dependable type. A compass was needed which would not be deflected by masses of steel as magnetic compasses are deflected and which would not be rendered inaccurate by one of the defensive devices employed in the battle against Axis magnetic mines. In the early days of the war deadly fields of magnetic mines were loosed in Yes, it's got magnetic mines. So basically, it needs something that uh, isn't going to be affected by metal or anything else. And that's where the gyro compass comes in. Let's see. Compass. Electrically controls repeater compass dials located throughout the ship. Go right here. There are usually five or six repeaters in assembly line. Here, piece by piece and unit by unit. The individual parts are put together as the compass takes shape. All right, so you have entire factories making these gyro compasses. Each man on the assembly line has a simple operation to perform. Simple because it was planned that way. With each piece so machine built, it fits easily into place. As the need for more compasses grew, more workers were added to the machine shops and the assembly section, and production was stepped up. Room to join the rest of its family. Electrically connected now with a master compass, each repeater card is synchronized with a master gyro compass and accurately reproduces the indications of its dial. The electrical circuits are 10 minutes to make sure the compass will hold all readings to within an hour on each of five table, where it must operate accurately for an hour on each of five different readings. A record is taken every 10 minutes to make sure the compass will hold all readings to within one half of one degree. Now the compass must really prove its sea legs. These Scoresby machines are designed to duplicate the motions of a ship under all conditions. Mounted on the Scoresby machine, the compass bows and weaves and nods, simulating the roll and pitch and yaw of a ship at sea. This combination of motions continues for an hour with test readings taken at timed intervals. This is followed by two hours on the roll only and then two hours on the pitch only. While not every Mark 14 gyro compass which leaves the production line is given a test run on this Super Scoresby, a number are. Enough to establish the fact that the gyro compass can operate and keep on operating accurately on a ship breasting waves of mountainous sides. This machine duplicates the gyrations which an installed compass goes through in a hurricane or typhoon. All right, so you saw that. It's basically mimicking hurricane uh, conditions. And this is all, they're all testing the factories for basically a, a whole bunch of these gy large, uh, extremely precise gyro compasses. And again, it's to, to, do, uh, to line up with Earth's rotation. And then here's the Wikipedia uh, on it, Jarred Compass uh, discusses it and so on, and also tells about the compensator weights, uh, compensate, or just weights right here. So they have more uh, practical methods to use weights to force axis of the compass to remain horizontal or perpendicular to the direction of the center of the earth, and uh, but otherwise allowed to free to rotate freely within a horizontal plane. So uh, basically it removes that uh, one freedom of, uh, of motion so that it's always just uh, is horizontal so that it can only just basically move towards where the uh, earth is rotating and uh, and then yeah basically that is all and then lastly here's my MS experiments links set up over here and a whole bunch of uh, next level experiments especially the gyroscope rising on their own and so on to so check those out and the links will be all there as well in the MES links you can see them over here the anti gravity setup uh, MES experiments and so on and uh, yeah and uh, basically uh, uh, so you saw all that uh, amount of engineering and design and going into it and especially the factories with all the testing and then you have to ask yourself are they all doing this for completely no reason if the if the earth is flat <laughs> so no this is uh that's why i included the title debunking flat earth is gyro compass literally it's it's in my view irrefutable uh, evidence of Earth's rotation and it's uh, not fl Earth's not flat. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and uh, yeah, stay tuned for another math easy solution.